I'm Dr. Bunsen Honeydew. Not really, I'm Ken Adelia. But you know what it is all about? It's all about the Benjamins, baby. That's House Speaker Paul Ryan's big message for the president as the clock ticks down toward the midterms. Politico reporting that the House Speaker called the president Sunday and urged him to scrap the immigration talk and highlight his massive economic achievements instead. I'm sure that worked out. The president has since responded with a tweet where he said, quote, Republicans have created the best economy in the history of our country and the hottest jobs market on the planet. The Democrat agenda is a socialist nightmare. The Republican agenda is the American dream, end quote. The president also penned an op-ed for Fox News that talked up the middle class tax cuts and the 4.5 million jobs that have been created under his watch. In separate rallies today, President Trump and former President Obama sparred over who's responsible for the economic boom. Swing the sausage, boys. Republicans have created the best economy in the history of our country and the hottest jobs market ever. Well, look, you take a look. Take a look what's happened. This is the hottest place economically anywhere in the world right now. When you hear these Republicans bragging about, look how good the economy is. Where you think that started? Oh, good Lord. Lock it up, Azure shirt. All right, so whose economy is it, and should the president have been pushing it all along? Former White House communications director and author of Trump, the blue-collar president, plus the director, and that's Anthony Scaramucci, and the director of the new documentary, Mooch. Andrew Moscato joins both of us. And Andrew, we're going to talk to you in just a little bit. But but first, Anthony Scaramucci, let me start with you. Uh, so a lot of people have been frustrated saying the president has this great economy. That's what he should be talking about. That's what he should be selling. Why has he made such a giant pivot toward immigration? Because his instincts are that uh, complacent voters, the economy represents happiness and complacent voters will go out and vote. And that's why most of these presidents lose the Midterm elections. So he's, so he's scaring them he's into voting with the on immigration. The trigger pulses of mm -hmm. immigration and those other fear factors to try to get him back out there. I mean, this is not a pulse of he, he knows what he's doing. Is there no a way question. to he's do? Narrow, he's narrow casting to his base. He's signaling to them that this is a referendum on him yeah. and get out there and vote like he did in 2016. Is there a way of, and, and now it's too late, uh, I, you can marry the two messages. Um, but has the president abandoned the House? Uh, well, he's acting more senatorial at this point, like he's running around for the Senate races. Yes. But I don't think he's abandoned Why is anything. That? Well, because I think he knows that if he if he keeps the Senate and he loses the House, he can declare victory and possibly start cutting some deals with the mm -hmm. Democrats on infrastructure and immigration and set himself up for the 2020 reelection. So all those things are positive. Uh, and if he loses the House, by the way, then he's consistent with history of other presidents, whether yes. it's 2002, 2010, 1994. Uh, most presidents do lose the uh, midterm. Ronald Reagan, 1982. Yes, but they, they weren't the polarizing figures that the president is yeah, now. No, he's, and he's, he could do the exact same thing yes, with the same poll numbers he, and have the same yes. or better results and yes. will get demonized. Yes, he's, a, he's creating an extreme reaction. I don't know if you caught those two guys. The one guy's 72 years old and he's effervescent, mm -hmm. and the other guy's about 56, 57, and he's hoarse and he's getting a little tired on the stump. And so yeah, I think these being are, president these are, is exhausting. Yeah, yeah, but look at the look at President Trump. I mean, the yeah. guy's 72 years old. He's he's hopping all over the country. You know why? If no he, booze. No I'm booze. telling you. No booze. Look he's at, living. Look at, he's living. He's living a Mormon lifestyle. But look at Mormon skin. More Mormons Mormon. have the best skin. They do. Mitt Romney looks like he's 40 years old. He, he is. Yeah. 140. Yeah. I think I look good for 77. <laughs> but Mitt Romney looks really good for 40. He's so good. All right. Well, let's talk about a subject that we're all familiar with. Anthony's quick stint as White House communications director. Do you know the story? of his rise on Wall Street and how he became a multi-billionaire. Filmmaker Andrew Moscato began following the Mooch four years ago, and now he's got a whole film about him called Mooch, Mooch Mania. Oh, yeah. Why the, did you decide four years ago to make a, a film about Well, you've met man. him. Yeah. So clearly he has a lot of personality, so I knew he'd at least make an interesting character in a documentary. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what the story would be. So at, at the time, it was really Anthony's kind of survival and actually his thriving after the financial crisis. So in many ways, it is a, a story about the financial crisis and what happened after. But then when Anthony uh, joined... Is the, he the big short? <laughs> yeah, that's well, actually I'm a good definitely, nickname. I'm definitely short. I don't know if I'm the big short, but... Well, your personality. Yeah, yeah, that's actually... Okay. I Thank think you I'm very much. You can, you you can yeah. use that. There you go. go ahead. Right. Uh, so so when do we see the real 
Anthony because yeah. I've known him to be gregarious, willing to talk about anything. He's not one of these people that comes in and has a list of things you can't ask him. Uh, and a lot of people do, especially people who've That's been in, in your position. So very uh, honest and incredibly like generous. That. Never going to be like that. No, I, you, you got me into the inauguration, and you've offered me sporting tickets. And well, I, well, the I'm only a, thing I'll, I've given you only is for like the Mets, though. Unfortunately, that's my tea. team. Yeah, you know, that's why I made me. Could you imagine if, if I was a Red Sox fan? Well, you would have really done well. <laughs> yeah, I hate the Red Sox. But so yeah. Uh, so who is the real mooch? Well, I think Anthony is a multifaceted person, and what was interesting is last summer he was kind of reduced to a soundbite, and mm -hmm. he's the type of guy that really you know, can't be reduced to a soundbite. And I think most people have the wrong impression of him. Uh, certainly, you come Is away Is it with as compelling as a documentary like Wiener? It's a different story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's a compelling uh, story, but Wiener is very different, and he's a very different person. It's different because there's, there's a downfall. I mean, you certainly have a few troughs in there, but ultimately, you know, you got to get up. You got to get up, Kenny. Yeah, exactly I mean, right. Like, it's the twelfth day that matters. It's not the eleven days in the White House. What happens after you've been excoriated? Yeah. How do you get up off the mat, dust yourself off, and mm -hmm. move on? And of course, I could play mayhem in these Allstate commercials if necessary, but that's what it is. Is that uh, is that the it, next it, big career goal? To come from a family like I did, blue mm -hmm. collar family, you got to take risks to get to where I am. And in order to get to where I am. You're going to fail. My There's mom no always way. said, go big or go home. No way you're not going to fail. So you better bounce like a Super Bowl, not break like China when you hit the floor. That's absolutely right. I like it. But I mean, he, right. he wrote it. By the way, it's tough on me. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, he. You know, there's points in yeah, that documentary not, it's, where I'm wincing. You said you wish it were an infomercial, and it's really not. I needed more arid extra dry watching the replay and reliving the firing mm. situation and the Get media excoriation. It was bad. All right, That's well, right. thank you, you Andrew uh, and Anthony, Thanks, Andrew. for Andrew's being here. Andrew's also my psychotherapist. I don't know a lot of people who have been the subject of their own documentary, but uh, congratulations. Thank Brutal. you both. Hot Thanks mic. for having us. Hot mic. Hot mic.